Dear students, today we will have a brief introduction to vibrational spectroscopy. We know that molecules are made up of atoms connected by bonds. While dealing with rotational spectroscopy, we had assumed that the bones are rigid, that is they are inflexible and we called it as rigid rotator model. But in reality, the bones connecting the atoms are not rigid. The atoms and bones may be viewed as balls connected through springs. The balls are the atoms and the spring is the bone. So the movement of atoms and bones will be like the vibration of spring connected to the balls. That is, the bone is flexible. It can be stretched like a spring or it can be compressed as you can see in this image. In other words, the atoms and the bones connecting them can vibrate like a spring about some main position. Such characteristic vibrations are called natural vibrations. And the energy of such molecular vibration is quantized. Now let's see what is vibrational spectroscopy. It is the study of transitions between quantized vibrational energy levels of molecules by absorbing radiation in the infrared region. Since the radiation is absorbed in the infrared region, vibrational spectroscopy is also known as infrared spectroscopy. This is the figure showing different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The infrared region is subdivided into three regions. Far infrared region which spans from 50 cm inverse to 667 cm inverse in terms of wave number. Next is the mid infrared region which ranges from 667 to 4000 cm inverse. And the last is the near infrared region which ranges from 4000 to 12500 cm inverse. So vibrational spectroscopy or infrared spectroscopy involves the study of transitions between the vibrational energy levels of molecules by absorbing radiation in the infrared region. What happens when absorption of IR occurs? I already mentioned that the bones are flexible that is they can be stretched or compressed. So when a molecule absorbs infrared radiation there may be changes in the shape of the molecules such as stretching of bones or bending of bones or there may be some internal rotation about the single bones. When does a molecule absorb infrared radiation? The infrared radiation can be absorbed only when the radiation interacts with a molecule undergoing a change in dipole moment as it vibrates or rotates. We had already seen in the rotational spectroscopy that for the absorption of microwave radiation, the molecule must possess a permanent dipole moment. Similarly, here also, in order for a molecule to absorb infrared radiation, the molecule must undergo a change in dipole moment during its vibration. Also, for the infrared radiation to be absorbed by the molecule, the energy difference between the two vibrational levels must match the energy of the interacting radiation. That is delta E, which is the energy difference between the two vibrational levels. That must be equal to the energy of the infrared radiation. Then only the IR radiation will be absorbed by the molecule. So to summarize, we can say that all molecules cannot show vibrational spectrum or all molecules cannot absorb infrared radiation. The molecules satisfying the second and the third conditions, that is the change in the dipole moment during vibration and also the energy difference must be equal to the energy of the infrared radiation. Only those molecules which satisfy these two conditions can absorb infrared radiation and can show vibrational spectrum. 
So, what will be the essential condition for a molecule to show infrared spectrum? The essential condition is the vibrations must cause a change in the dipole moment of the molecule. The molecules which undergo a change in the dipole moment can interact with the oscillating or alternating electric field of the radiation, IR radiation that results in the absorption of radiation and produces changes in the vibrational energy levels. We measure the energy change and that will produce the infrared spectrum or vibrational spectrum. So the essential condition is vibrations must cause a change in the dipole moment of the molecule. The change in dipole moment can interact with the electric component of the infrared radiation and results in its absorption which produces changes in the vibrational energy levels. So when we study these changes in the vibrational energy levels then that is called infrared spectroscopy. Now let's see what type of molecules can absorb infrared radiation or can produce an infrared spectrum. Heteronuclear diatomic molecules like HCl, HCN etc. Similarly, polyatomic molecules like H2O, CO2, NH3, CH4 etc. All these types of molecules will produce a change in the dipole moment during the vibration. So, such molecules can show infrared spectrum. And the molecules which show infrared spectrum are called infrared active molecules. At the same time, symmetric diatomic molecules like H2, Cl2, N2, etc. will not produce any change in the dipole moment or their dipole moment is zero as we have seen in the rotational spectrum. So, such molecules will not absorb infrared radiation and hence they do not show infrared spectra. Such molecules are called infrared inactive molecules. So, to summarize, Infrared spectroscopy exploits the fact that molecules have specific frequencies at which they vibrate corresponding to discrete energy levels. Infrared spectroscopy is a useful technique which gives information about the functional groups present in the molecule. So we will have a detailed discussion on the theoretical principle of infrared spectroscopy in the later classes. Thank you.